I see um, participants coming coming through um, as we are expecting um, quite a few more. Um, so um, that you might see those cr those names cropping up in the participant list. But good morning, everyone, and welcome to our um, webinar session today. Um, apologies to those who have been on previous webinars, um, on our previous webinars, because um, you will be hearing from me, Wendy Wilkinson, um, just taking you through a little bit of background before we move on to our speaker today. Um, so apologies for that, um, but there are um, delegates who are new to um, hearing about the project. So let me just start then. Um, uh, this project is part of a suite of DfE funded projects which has been addressing different aspects of study program pr um, provision. Um, the whole purpose of the of these range of DfE projects is is to share the learning, share what's working around study program provision, and the topic that we were tasked to look at, or the area um, uh, that we were asked to look at, was real and realistic work experience, and really to get a feel of what's happening on the ground, how are providers addressing this, and and how are um, providers um, taking this forward. So our, our project was, um, was commissioned by the Department for Education and um, myself, Wendy Wilkinson and Rifat Fufa have been um, working with um, a range of partner organisations and I'm just going to talk you through um, how we've been doing that. And we've been working um, on this project on behalf of the Gazelle Group. So just a little bit of protocol first of all before we start. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions and um, but we're going to keep those if you don't mind until the end, um, until the end of the presentations. Um, so at the end of the presentations you'll be able to um, you'll be able to type in a, a question um, for us. The sessions are being recorded so that we can disseminate the, um, the shared learning more widely and um, you can take those recordings back to your base if, there's, if, if, if this is an area that you'd like to pick on with, with other staff team. So at the end of the presentation it is your time to ask questions and um, uh, we, don't, we haven't used the raise your hand but you can raise your hand but there will be the type in the chat facility or if you prefer to ask. Um, ask um, directly then we can um, un uh, unmute your microphone and then you can ask um, the group um, a question yourself. So that's how the, this session is going to work. Um, so the agenda then for the webinars um, like I said is based around the shared learning um, and the project um, has has produced a report which is on the um, DfE work experience website that we've set up there. Um, there's a report, case studies and a blog facility and these recorded sessions will be placed in, on that website. It's a small team as I said myself and Rifat and um, Andrew Thompson. Um, we've been working with partner organisations from January to April this year um, looking at their practice um, to see what we can share with colleagues um, on the, uh, as to what's working on the ground. So we, as part of that dissemination, we've had the three webinars. Um, we've set up three webinars. We've had Barking and Dagenham, which was looking at different approaches to employer engagement and work-based learning. We've had Farnborough Sixth Form College um, um, talking about how they've engaged strategically um, with partners and with employers um, to develop a win-win situation around um, the provision of, uh, of volunteering and um, work experience. And today we've got Highbury College looking at making the use of employers limited time to enrich the curriculum through um, the establishment of employer-led expert advisory boards. So it's going to be really great to hear that and then the opportunity for you to ask any questions. The session will run for an hour, um, so we will be we will be running up to um, twelve o'clock, um, and so just to just to make you aware of that. 
Okay, so the background to the project. The project wanted uh, us to, the DfE wanted us to, to focus on specific areas of challenge, um, more challenging areas than perhaps the traditional, you know, work experience on vocational programs, which, um, you know, for, for lots of organisations isn't, isn't too much of a challenge. So our, our focus was looking at work experience of students following academic programmes at level three. And we have three sixth form colleges um, as part of the um, project group. And um, we've been amazed to see how they've turned themselves around to respond to this challenge for their academic programmes. And indeed, our last presentation was from a sixth form college. That was the Farnborough one. We've been looking at work experience in subject areas where there's skills gaps, um, looking at um, the strategic priorities for local employers, um, working with the um, local enterprise partnerships. So we've, we've, we've had some experience of that coming through. Work experience in deprived areas and where there's limited choice and all sorts of um, different um, solutions being looked at around um, one example is um, the development of career academies and providers working with those and perhaps thinking of commercial ventures. Making use of employers limited time, we're going to hear a bit more on that today from the Highbury example um, and we've got some providers looking at professional mentoring, employers taking on that role but also um, employers allowing students to um, get more involved through um, for example, hotel takeovers, which we've seen um, of, and have case studies on in terms of what our partners have been doing. And finally, working with employers to create real world assignments and some really good work being done around project based learning um, and all sorts of activity, activity linked to that. So those were the um, focus areas that we were asked to, to look at, although we did look at work experience right across the board. And you can see these are the partners that we worked with on the project um, and we work with them. There are a mix from up and down the country, um, some in um, quite deprived areas of, of, of the country, some in rural. So we got quite a good feel of, of, of um, what was being put in place and um, what was happening on the ground. Themes that emerged as a result of the um, our research um, fitted into these um, categories that you have on the screen here. We saw the development of strategic partnerships, um, organisations working with chambers of commerce, local enterprise partnerships, schools, working on sort of local and national um, events. Considering some of the priorities across across the region and working jointly together, so again we're, we're thinking about this win-win situation. What's in it for the partners that we can work with on this agenda, and and what's in it for us, and how can we enrich our um, students' um, curriculum by giving them access to to the workplace and to build their employability skills. We saw structures and systems being set up in organisations to facilitate um, this, um, the provision of work experience. And we saw um, job shops being set up, agency kind of um, um, areas within provider organisations to support the development um, uh, uh, and to support, you know, mainstreaming um, the access to real and work, real work experience. And we, um, as part of that, we also seen some new roles introduced, some um, technician type roles, some progress coaching type roles, some um, progression roles introduced um, to monitor and track um, what students were doing and um, and 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 how they were progressing with their with their with their learning from the um, work programs. We saw we've we've seen the the enterprise culture featuring much more strongly, um, commercial ventures being used to develop the employability skills, um, and the, the whole area of a competitive approach, whereby um, students were seeing that they had to compete for places on work experience, 
but also a competitive approach in terms of you know how to drive up employability skills and also specific skill levels whereby providers are using um, world skills competitions as for example as a way to bring employers in and engage employers and to show um, the skills that um, young people are developing and build relationships for for future um, programs we saw the student journey enhanced um, the work experience journey being recorded um, through tutorial processes um, lots more enhanced IAG with employers involved in, in as part of visiting speaker programs um, so making sure that 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 young people really do understand and get a feel of the of the areas that they're going into so lots of creativity in terms of work experience um, creativity in the way um, providers are engaging with employers and their involvement um, in working with providers on uh, right across the board um, you know, again particularly in the project based learning which which um, which is working really well to engage employers and to and to motivate the the young people so that's just a snapshot really of, of the sort of themes that have come, been coming out as we've been um, working on our project um, what I'm going to do now is to um, hand you over to um, D. John, who is the um, managing director of Highbury College. And D is going to talk us through um, their particular work on the ground in, in setting up and developing employer advisory boards so that they can make the most of employers' limited time um, to enrich the curriculum. So, Handing over. T, are you? Have you got your? Is the audio on for me now? It is, D. Yeah, I can hear you. I think. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. Um, uh, I will try and keep this. Um, to I've got a timer. Um, uh, which I think if I speak for about fifteen minutes because I could go on and on and on and on about employer engagement and I don't want to um, leave us with no time for um, question and answers. But um, I think it'd be safe to say that over three years ago, um, we were, uh, as you do, constantly looking at your employer engagement and seeing what works and what didn't work. And we really felt the kind of the um, forum that we had then, which was a very general forum of employers and bringing them in just wasn't working. And it wasn't working really because um, mixing employers from different sectors with completely different needs was a key issue that we had. So um, in discussions with the principal Stella, um, we decided that what we needed to do was kind of raise the whole game of employer engagement to a real senior level because also, I'm sure, like yourselves, you'll find that sometimes what we were getting was um, the employers would send along who was available um, to a meeting. And that really wasn't working either, because sometimes you would get somebody um, pretty low ranking in, a, in an employer organization who didn't really know enough about the industry and the sector and where it was going. Um, so in setting up these expert advisory boards, the, um, the challenge for me um, was to really get senior people on board, you know, directors, CEOs, um, people who could really tell us what was going on in their sector. Um, and that's what we did. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, we've um, had to do a lot of work right at the beginning in terms of meeting with employers um, having discussions with them. Um, and from the start, we wanted them to be employer led. Um, so the first thing to do was to find um, the right chair people for that. Um, and to be fair, I think the I think the title expert advisory board helps because, you know, people do like to be called experts. And um, we also um, set out from the beginning that, you know, we would be happy if they met twice a year. Um, in the end, most of them now meet three and four times a year. Um, and it's great when you see an expert advisory board actually increasing the number of meetings because, you know, you know, you're really making some progress. Um, so we went around, we recruited um, and we set up um, and I'll talk to you about the number of boards that we set up in a couple of slides. But as you can see there, um, we did the terms of reference, industry led platform, 
with sector experts. And I think, as I've said, that was the key to advise the college on the development and delivery of world class, innovative um, employer responsive services. And again, I think employers at a senior level reacted very well to that um, aspiration that, you know, we're not talking about being you know, some small FE college down in Portsmouth, you know, um, delivering for its local need. You know, we are, but, you know, our aspiration is that we deliver world class, um, which we do. And they like that. And I think that that make, made a difference as well. Um, and also the fact that I was guaranteeing that, you know, the feedback that would come back from the expert advisory boards, that we would do something with it and that they wouldn't just be talking shops, as um, can often be the case with these things. Um, so just looking at, um, we came up with key objectives, as you can see there. One of the key problems I had as someone who was had responsibility for employer engagement for a long time was labour market intelligence. And, you know, I'm sure like yourselves, you get lots and lots of national reports on skills, priorities and skills needs. You might even get some regional reports um, on the same. But what I wanted was to really know what was going on locally with our employers in our patch, the people that we serve. Um, and that was a key thing. And actually, as I'll show you in a little while, um, some of the feedback that we've had back sometimes contradicts what's going on at a national level for the employers in our area. Um, now, this one is particularly just for construction and building services, but as you can imagine, those um, terms of reference are um, written for each board. So the emerging demand for a particular sector is something that we look after. Um, content of training programmes, we take along new courses, um, any planned courses, we take them along to the EAB and in um, a couple of instances they've said to us, no, that isn't fit for purpose. Uh, and again, I'll tell you when I get onto the individual boards. And um, future trends and innovations in professional practice, that's been really, really useful. Um, and sometimes what I do in the meeting is actually, even though, okay, we've got an employer cheering it, um, I will ask them to go back to the key objectives just to see that we're covering everything. Um, the professional dialogue and um, direct research um, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a second um, I do have sector business plans for each of the sectors that we serve um, some of them are very well used because they're um, it's a bit of bureaucracy there's quite a few of the boards aren't really interested in the kind of a detailed sector business plan and actually the engineering EAB um, asked me to convert what was maybe a 10 page sector business plan into a plan on a page which I am now very keen on um, and to consider the outcome so when we have if we had Ofsted we haven't had Ofsted um, in here for a while obviously since we got the grade one um, but if we do have a QAA review or anything like that then we do tell them and we what the results of that and to review content of existing programs so um, hopefully that's straightforward um, right um, I think what you can see there is that there are eight sector expert advisory boards. We did start off with 10. Um, we originally had one for retail because we were also a member of the retail NSA. And I have to say that that was pretty nightmarish to run and even trying to get it set up. We did get the support of a, a major retail employer in Portsmouth, the big department store, uh, but trying to get the support of other people in that sector was just, um, just really difficult and impossible in the end. Um, they don't engage very well, they're very SME based. Um, and in the end, because we weren't seeing the growth in the retail side of our curriculum, um, we um, stepped away from the NSA and then we also disbanded that EAB. I think if it's not working, it's not working. We just need to say, okay, let's move on. Um, and that one didn't work. The other one that um, didn't work so well right at the start um, was one for, let me just get the title properly, was what we had separate one for creative and cultural and we had a separate one straight at, right at the beginning for um, travel and tourism. Um, they they were struggling a little bit in terms of their reach and in terms of what they covered. Um, and in the end, I got um, myself and the two chair people from those boards, the three of us sat down and said, well, right, why don't we combine? So as you can see now, we've got one board, which is tourism, corporate and cultural. Um, and that seems to work a lot better and seems to have a lot more coherency. Um, the In terms of the logistics and planning, I think to make this work, um, you, I, we, the college, we need to do everything. So even though it's chaired by the employer, I do all of the agendas 
Um, I agree it with the chair via email, um, but basically I put the agenda together. The meetings tend to be an hour and a half. Um, and again, um, I try to make sure with the chairperson that we keep to that timing because I don't want employers getting cheesed off thinking, right, you know, I need to be back at work and you're just delaying me now. A lot of those, the meetings are all either breakfast meetings, so it's either a 7.30 start or we do them at the end of the day, but there's none of them that go on at lunchtime or throughout the day. Um, and again, it's about doing them at a time that suits that sector. Um, generally, the agenda tends to be two meaty items and then one which is a constant standing item, which is emerging priorities. And that's where the employers will tell us and we do the round rob and we go around the room and ask them if anything has changed, if there's anything now that has suddenly come up as an issue that they think that we need to be aware of. And that's a good kind of catch all um, for us to be able to um, make sure that we're keeping informed. So we've got the eight expert advisory boards now. Um, health and social care is um, has been an incredible expert advisory board. Um, we have had, not of late, but we have had um, somebody from Skills for, for, for Care, um, the um, sector skills body, also on that board. Unfortunately, now she's um, um, moved on, but um, we're hoping that we can still get them on board. Um, but it has been incredibly useful. The kind of things that we've been discussing at that board are things like the new role of the personal assistants um, and what they would need vis-a-vis -vis training. Um, we tabled a level four diploma in adult care um, when that was changing and they endorsed that. And again, I think from an Ofsted point of view, I think to see that kind of engagement and the endorsement of courses that we're doing. Um, and um, they were very keen for us, as you can imagine, with health and social care, for us to recruit people who care. Um, you know, we've had issues in the past with students coming on to health and social care who don't really get the sector. And those employers really emphasise to us the need to make sure that everybody who's coming onto those programmes understands that there are physical and mental demands of working in the care sector, and that it's a vocation, not a job. And, and something that we did on the back of the EAB was set up a whistleblowing competition, um, because that's a big issue, as we know, within the health sector. Um, so we wanted to make sure that our students were well aware of their rights and responsibilities. And those some of those employers that are on the board actually came in to view the students' presentations on that, which again, really raised it from a student point of view. Um, the other area that they wanted us to really emphasize were things like stress management, um, mental health issues, um, deprivation of liberty, and you know the ongoing you know, increasing issues around dementia. Um, hospitality and catering, um, a, a very vibrant board, um, chaired by a major local hotelier. Um, I've I've got about I've got about twenty pages of feedback now over the last three years from all of the different boards, and that does go out to all of the um, the sector leads that we have here, and they incorporate that feedback into their SAR. Obviously, they attend the meeting as well, um, but I actually put a summary together of of all those things. Um, hospitality and catering were very keen for us to make sure, as you'd imagine, that we recruit students with a passion for delivering customer service or a passion for delivering amazing food. Um, there were certain things that employers were frustrated about, like when they would get young people coming out of colleges, that they would show them software that's maybe specific to the Marriott. And some students would just kind of um, get very nervous about using particular software. So um, we actually now have the students and we're engaging with a lot of those hoteliers um, so that students get access through the work experience now to that software so that, you know, they are much more employable. Um, they also want us to make sure that um, the students have an in-depth knowledge of the subsectors that make up hospitality and the cultural differences between different establishments is really important. As you know, some hotels are very suited and booted. It's all ties and morning suits. And then there are other hotels that you go to, you see managers, no ties, much more relaxed culture. And obviously it depends on their clientele. And they just, you know, really was em were emphasizing how important it was that we get that across. Um, the other thing that was very useful is that those employers emphasize the need for varied work experience. So it isn't just enough for a student 
in our area in hospitality to get some work experience, maybe in one or two establishments, they were really emphasizing, you know, it needs to be varied because of all these various subsectors within the sector, you know, the varied, the more varied the work experience, the better. And for all level three and above students, knowledge and understanding of revenue management, you know, the money um, comes into, and actually the commerciality has really come out of every expert advisory board. Um, construction and building services, an amazing EAB, um, chaired by um, a chap who is a contract um, director at um, Wearings, which is now called Burgoynes, they've been taken over by a French company. He's also a local councillor in an area locally, so we've also done community projects through him and his work locally. So this, this chap has got a real community view and a corporate view of what the college needs to be doing. We've done incredible work with him. Um, um, they've had a big impact in terms of what we deliver. Um, students need to be able to deliver toolbox talks, which are the things that happen on site nearly every morning. Um, students need to know about the energy costs and the energy efficiency of buildings, no matter what level or what trade they're doing. Um, level three and above students, they were very keen that they have coaching and mentoring um, and skills like that built into their qualification and that they can do professional um, presentations. Um, another one is advanced engineering. This is an amazing one as well. Um, this is run by um, a senior manager, production manager from um, Astrium, which is now part of Airbus. Um, they have had a big impact on the fact that they wanted us to produce um, a video, a promotional video for apprenticeships that really did show the opportunities within engineering. You'll appreciate those employers get really cheesed off with people um, considering engineering to be dirty and um, you know something that maybe is beyond certain students. Um, so we've done a lot with that EAB, we've done the video. We're now um, sponsoring Teen Tech, which is the Maggie Philbin um, you know, events that have been going around the rest of the country that came to Portsmouth for the first time. And um, and actually that EAB were very keen because right at the beginning of the EABs, I had Wendy Fennell come in and present all of our entrepreneurship and what we were doing with the students. And that um, sector, um, that EAB, were really keen on the enterprise curriculum, the entrepreneurship. Um, and to, that gave us the ammunition to really embed that and to really go for it with the engineering department because they were a bit reticent. They were kind of thinking, well, you know, this isn't really for us. This is for other students. But having the employer endorsement um, really did push that agenda in that area. Um, Highbury Planet is our name for our Centre for Sustainability. So this is one that is cross-sector. Um, it's run by an amazing chap who, Tim Fenn, he's, um, he's a designer and engineer in his own right, and he, and he works all over the world, and he's got his own business, and um, he works in Brazil and places like that on these amazing sustainable buildings, and he's actually coming down today to meet with me, um, and he is passionate about education, and I think this is the, the thing about the EABs, it's getting the right people on board, and um, you know, these people have all been with us now for over three years. And and yes, we have sometimes we have some movement where people move jobs and that. But we I think because we've the way that we've set it up and because it's high level and when you can go to an employer, you can say, well, look who else is on the this EAB. They they do want to get involved. Um, and, um, you know, it is about maintaining all of those links like in between the meetings. When I see something interesting, I will send it to the EAB, but I'm also very, very protective of my distribution list for those employers. Um, I get asked by other people, can you send this out and that out to the EAB? And I am not going to in inundate them with emails and become a pest to them. Um, so that we have to control that very tightly, as, you, as you'll imagine. So the Highbury Planet EAB, um, Tim and all the sustainability experts that we've got on that, we run a themed um, um, term around sustainability and we run events we run a major college event and they get involved in that they they say what the theme should be this year it was water conservation and um, they link us in with people who can come and can maybe be speakers on the day even the EAB members themselves have come in and, be, and been speakers um, yes highly highly tourism and um, corporate and culture and um, that one I would say is the less dynamic surprisingly enough um, um, we've made some progress um, and we've talked about things like production arts courses 
um, we have had um, a lot of assistance with um, employ sorry work placements. Um, we've had them look at some courses and new courses that we were looking at, and they have commented on them. Um, we've got them involved with. We did a takeover event, um, and they got involved with that. So. Um, and they were very um, supportive of all of the work that we're doing around um, an events learning company that we had set up last academic year. Um, IT is an amazing one um, that's chaired by um, originally, well, still is, sorry, it's chaired by a chap from um, IBM, um, very high level. Um, they are meeting more uh, during the year than we'd initially suggested. Um, and they are very proactive. Um, they wanted us, they were very worried about um, the numbers of young people coming into the sector. Um, and they asked us to do an event for the schools. Um, we put that on um, and it was great. We also got sponsorship. So we did get this Titan the Robot in, which cost thousands and IBM paid for that. And that had a huge impact on these. Um, and we brought in the primary schools and the secondary schools. And those events tend to take the form of 20 minute tasters, and then they've got 10 minutes to move on to the next taster. And I have to say that that as a formula has worked really well. And we've now used that in other areas because um, we found that actually 20 minutes is about the optimum time when you're doing a taster and you're just introducing a subject. And um, your feedback from the schools as well, which is brilliant, um, have, have been very positive about that. Um, big things that the IT uh, EAB were talking about were things like, which I'm sure you're all up to speed with, was the importance of cyber security. Um, luckily for me, um, the head of department was doing a master's in cyber security and she presented back what we were doing around that and how it was integrated into all the courses. They were very happy with that, but they also suggested that we needed to put on a part time um, cybersecurity course for people maybe who had done their training five, six, ten years ago and you needed a major kind of professional update. And um, and that that is um, available now. The the last one, digital media, includes media and journalism. Again, a brilliant board. We 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 it, it wasn't so good right at the beginning. And what we did was we ran an alumni event to kickstart this. And the the head of that area um, is brilliant at social media, as is that whole sector. And she engaged loads and loads of part-time students. We ran an alumni event. And of course, as you'd expect, many of those um, alumni are also, whoops. Sorry, I've lost my screen. I'm just getting it back. There you are. Um, so we, we ran the alumni event, and of course, as, you, as, as I was saying, a lot of them are employers, a lot of them are working with Sky, working with major national newspapers, because we, we run a very successful um, NCTJ program, um, which is the National Council for the Journalists. Um, and from that, we really reinvigorated the membership of that EAB. And since then, it's been running brilliantly. We actually had that EAB yesterday evening, and the, the feedback, they were looking at some of the work that the students had done. We did a major democ uh, democracy project around the election with the students. And we also did um, a great project with the local police around the Prevent project. And we produced videos um, and they were a client of ours. They looked at that and they made suggestions last night about how we could yet now use that to really further the teaching and learning and assessment with the students. Um, and we had some great suggestions and now that is feeding into what we do with those students this summer, particularly the ones who are going from one year and progressing into another. Um, another thing that came up yesterday evening was an employer was asking about video journalism. Um, did we do it? How did we do it? And of course, all those questions then, of course, prompt me and our sector leads to go, oh, right, OK, maybe there's more of a need here. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's an opportunity here to put on a full cost course. Um, and to get moving on that. Um, the kind of employability things that they were um, emphasizing were the ability for students to be able to proof check their own work. Um, again, last night, they emphasized the importance of social media and the fact that, you know, now within media and journalism, it's all multitasking. You know, they've got to be able to video, they've got to be able to edit, they've got to be able to push all of their content out through social media. And then, and a big discussion last night was around analytics and how important they are and the fact that the students need to be able to crunch data and they need to be able to understand it. Um, the I think I've talked about the wins as I've been going along, but as you can see there, 
the employer voice is definitely very, very loud at Highbury College. Um, this is something that we discuss at meetings. Um, it's something that goes into the SARS. Um, I have um, actions and I follow through everything out of the meetings and then that's fed back to those employers. Um, and I think that's why we keep their engagement. They know we're doing something with their feedback. We've now got an employability matrix and the, the basis for that was actually the Gazelle College framework for 21st century entrepreneurial skills. So I took that and then I've done a great big A3 sheet with all of the individual um, sectors on it. And then I've put the feedback underneath. So and that is embedded in our online employability space. So the students, when they're putting their online CV together or their online portfolio, they have got all of these prompts from the EAB that's saying, for instance, with media and journalism, you need to be able to you know, talk about proof checking your own work, accuracy and the high quality presentation you know, knowledge of things like libel law, you know, obvious ones like spelling grammar. Um, but with journalists, it's the shorthand skills that are really key. You know, a personal active social media presence. A lot of these employers um, will check um, out potential applicants and um, social media presence. And unless it's engaging and unless they've got lots of followers and are seeing interesting things, they might not even get um, called to interview. Um, Right. OK, I think I've probably said way more than I should do and, get, and, and uh, eaten into your time, but um, perhaps we can take questions, Rafa. Thank you. Thank you. And can can you hear me, everyone? Can you hear me, Dee? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much um, for taking us through um, through that really interesting presentation. I know I've got two pages of notes here myself, so I'm expecting um, our um, delegates to to have very similar at their end. Um, it's an opportunity now for um, our participants to ask any questions. Um, and um, if you'd like to ask a question, you can see the chat facility box on the um, right hand side at the bottom of your screen. Um, we've got Mike Jones, who is is just about um, to ask us a question. I can see he's he's typing something now. But really fascinating stuff, Dee. Um, and this, you've been working on this three three or four years, did you say, building yeah. it, building yeah, the groups? At the end, end of the third year of, of of implementing it, you know, as it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I will wait to see what Mike is going to ask first. Um, what size are these groups? Um, um, Dee, some of them would you got, say how many? They tend they tend to be about half a dozen employers. Yeah. Sometimes okay. more. Like the the one that we had last night, we had five employers on it. Hmm. And do you have any of your curriculum staff in there? Yeah. Yeah. Previously, the the head of department um, would have been there. Um, we've changed that now. Their sector leads, but yeah, the head of department is always there. I try not to um, have too many staff there because what I don't want is a kind of um, a college talking shop. Um, and you know, if I overrun it with curriculum people, it would it, that's exactly what would happen. Um, mm. So we keep our staff numbers to a minimum, if you like. Right. Myself. Okay. Yeah, excellent. We've had uh, Mike thanking you, Dee, and um, and um, it's City College Plymouth also have um, use employer advisory boards um, with the with what with what they're doing. If others are um, planning to start um, setting up employer these these boards, where do they? Where, can you give them some advice on where they start, Dee? Where would you start if you were setting this up again? These sort of boards up. Yeah, I think like you just it, it's really it should be on your priority sectors. You know, they're they're all of our priority sectors mm. and you know, and obviously other colleges will have different priority sectors, you know, depending on their area. And I think that's the key thing is to reflect your local economy. Yeah. Uh, and um and meet the local employer needs. Like I like obviously that's just one part of the employer engagement. You know, I'm um I I'm on the chamber, the local chamber board and things like that, but I have to say that this is the best way for us to get feedback from the employer and to know what's going on. Mm. Um, and it's, it's been incredibly useful. Um, that commerciality aspect, I think, is something that's missing in an awful lot of courses. Um, 
you know, the um, the construction um, employers will say, you know, do the students know the price of a brick? Do they yeah. know the price of a length of copper pipe? And what's interesting, yeah. I, I did a, um, an observation in February and I asked the students, some level one students, that very question. And they didn't know the price of mm. the copper pipe that they were using and cutting up. And now we've resolved that. And um, but, you know, all of these things are so important. It was the same with the hospitality EAB. You know, they're mm. big into sustainability, big into local food, seasonal food. And again, that's not really in the curriculum. Um, what I did with that was I applied for some European money two and a half years ago. And I got um, I had I was able to take on a coordinator to run a local food project and um, which was highly successful at embedding all of the sustainability issues and also um, getting and enriching the curriculum because our students, you know, a lot of them are, you know, down in Portsmouth, inner city kids, some of them hadn't been to a farm, hadn't obviously wouldn't have been to an abattoir or anything like that. Um, but now through the project and through the work of that coordinator, um, we have brilliant visits for all of those students and they are going out, they're going out to salad manufacturers, they're going out to farms, they're going to abattoirs, they're going to a local ice cream manufacturer. So they're, it's really enriched the curriculum in a way that we just couldn't have done if we didn't have the right EABs giving us the feedback and giving us that direction. Yeah, excellent. So it's on, on, on all fronts really in terms of how they're supporting the, the, the curriculum. Um, Rifat had a question there about how it informs your curriculum. But in terms of just just asking, you know, talking about some of the basics that they need to understand around the sector, um, oh. the cost of bricks and, and things like that, but also providing visits and and actual work experience. Have they mm. are they able to to offer oh, yeah. you that as well? Yeah. Absolutely. They do all of that. And they also, um, you know, on the IT side, we've had quite a few of these senior IT people in doing guest speaker slots on project mm -hmm. management and on um, um, data centers and virtualization. A lot of things that are kind of more new and up and coming, you know, um, big data. Um, it's not new anymore, but when it was, we had people coming in um, and yeah, you know, you to get that, and okay, we've always, we, you know, within FE, we've always had guest speakers in the past, um, but did we always have the right guest speaker talking about the most emerging issues and the right subject areas? Yeah, yeah, no, excellent. We've got Alison from um, working in Kings Lynn area is talking about the difficulty she's had with retail. Um, yeah. She's experienced, you know, the similar um as that's quite an area it's a popular area that that um young people may have been interested in going into mm -hmm. absolutely but as a sector you know they they don't at least in our area and i think this is this is the thing isn't mm -hmm. it this is about this area you know they weren't supporting apprenticeships they weren't paying well um career opportunities were limited mm -hmm. um yeah, not 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 a, a good sector for us in this area to deal with from the point of view of uh, of young people having you know great career opportunities and moving on, and obviously the big but you know your average retail employer um, um and they don't release people for training of any sort. You know, so mm -hmm. from our point of view, we just felt that we were putting a huge amount of time and effort in and trying to do the impossible, really. Mm. There's another question from Alison around Teach2 and whether you've been involved with that, um, whether the boards are linked to that. Um, have you Sorry, heard of that, Dee? Teach2. Yeah. I think, no. Alison, is that where the employers are, uh, are helping to teach the subject areas? Do you have em any employers? You said you mentioned your employers coming in to do visiting speaker slots. Yeah. Do, um, in different well, you're asking areas. if they come in to teach as well. Um, no, we haven't. We haven't taken on any of them as teachers as such. No. But they do visiting speakers, and I guess they believe it. Um, I'm oh, just yeah. looking at what Alison's saying. 
they come to share their current thinking and sharing professional skills. Absolutely, yeah. And that's invaluable, really, you know. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to say, Alison? You've got your microphone um, enabled now. Yeah, I think the um, the teach too was where there's where there's shortage areas or difficult areas. You know, some of it around maths, for example, where you've had particular employers who 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 have come in and helped explain some of the. I don't know, more vocational aspects of maths teaching um, yeah. to groups. And I think that's yeah. been involved with, with them, yeah, in the terms of the teach too, or on some of the technology um, kind of things. Yeah, we have, we, to be honest, we haven't had that need. So I suppose maybe yeah. it's because we haven't had that need, we haven't um, sought out that support. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, any more questions for D? The most relevant times for the employers, um, you know, pitching it at the right level and, you know, the experts, um, but looking at all the information that they give you, I can see how that could, that is, you know, would really um support all the work you do across the college with your learners in those vocational areas absolutely and i think you know it's keeping the momentum going with them you know and i think uh, it um, it's it, they don't run themselves you yeah. know you need someone like myself at a senior level who is who's able to pick up on all of the noise that goes around the college as well around what's happening and what's new and what's different so that you know we can keep constantly keep them up to date with what's happening so i think my relationship with my opposite numbers in the college is very important because i've got responsibility for employer engagement mm. and um, but not all of the curriculum but how this keeps um all of the staff teams up to up to date with with everything that's happening is is, is superb as well isn't it i think it is i think you know they it gives the staff as well the credit, you know, the kind of the feeling that we're credible as a kind of a senior team that, you know, we're doing things properly and that we have got these employers like the, you know, even the staff themselves are, even though they're not there, they're very impressed with the fact that, you know, we've got those employers around the table and we've managed to get them to make a commitment to come in so yeah. many times a year. Yeah. You know, because a lot of staff will tell you, oh, employers don't have the time. They won't mm -hmm. do this. They won't do that. Well, they will do an awful lot, if you, I think, if you do it in the right way. And, you know, even just little things like the minutes, you know, like one employer said to me, oh, well, I have to do the minutes. And I said, absolutely not. All you have to do is just turn up yeah. with your knowledge and your understanding of what goes on. So yeah. it's just make it as easy as you can for, for them is my, my advice. Superb. We've got and a question. Just work at it. Yeah, superb. We've got a question from Kevin. Have you used um, the board to support CPD for staff returning to the workplace to update their skills and knowledge? Um, we haven't so far, but I could see I could easily see that happening. In terms of a placement for them, or mm. uh, yeah, just in terms of you know getting the feedback, I guess, from some of your meetings with what's happening in well, the sector. A lot of the time with um, with people going out and getting their own, having time back in the workplace, um, a lot of the time, because our staff have come from that sector, mm. they've got their own links. And when that goes on to, uh, as a target in their performance review to go out for so long, and generally they tend to be able to come back with, you know, I've got this person and that for this company, this company, and they're willing to mm. take me on. What I haven't had as yet, but could easily happen is somebody saying to me, they're from a particular sector, but they don't have anybody to, or a, a business that they can go out and do their CPD with. Um, mm. But that could happen. And if it did, that would be where I'd go back to is the EABs, definitely. Superb. And Dee, you've inspired Katie. Um, she's going to go back and um, look at setting up an advisory board for, for the creative area. Um, Brilliant. And because um, Katie came in late, just to recap on how often you have the meetings, um, Dee? Um, we asked originally for them to be twice a year. Yeah. Um, 
they, there's no, none, none of them are meeting for anything less than three times a year. But some of them now, like engineering and IT, they're meeting four times a year. Mm. But that was their own decision. I didn't push it in the meeting. Um, I was, you know, I let the chairperson and the employers decide. Any more questions? Got one from Kevin coming up. Not questions as such, just thank you, Dee. For all no of worries. Those. Thanks, Kevin. Are there any others that you've got planned or do you think you've got enough coverage now um, with the eight that you've got? Um, I think I need, we definitely need to do some work. It's interesting you were saying about creative. We definitely, with Katie, we definitely need to do some more work on the creative sector. Um, you know, as I'm sure Katie knows, they're not the easiest people to engage because um, obviously they're very, a lot of them are SMEs and they're, they're busy running their businesses. Um, but yeah, I think um, looking at the membership and um, you know things like that, I think we definitely we need to do some more work on that. Um, what's interesting, actually, which I didn't mention, is we actually we, we we've got we've got a group of early years employers, basically nursery employers, mm. who meet, but they don't meet under the banner of an EAB now. And that's the reason for that is because um, a member of staff in health and social care um, who runs the early years courses. She set up a forum for the employers um, because basically we weren't getting them to the health and social care EAB. Mm -hmm. And she's an ex-nursery manager herself. These are all SME businesses. And that has worked really well. And, and, and she continues. And I, and I get all of those notes and all the rest of it. And um, because that works, I'm not, I'm not interested in breaking it up and trying to make it into an EAB. It's, they seem to suit a very much more informal meeting um, they like the idea that they're coming in to meet someone who was one of them. Um, if, if I if I try to up that level, I think it might scare them off. You know, if I said now you're in EAB and we want you one of you employers now to chair it, you know, they don't want to do that. So I think with early years, we've got something different going on. Mm, but it's a similar function. <laughs> yeah, but it functions in a similar way in terms of it keeps you involved in 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 what's happening Absolutely. in the sector and vice versa yeah yeah and, they, and even actually the conversation because i did attend one of them um but i wanted i didn't want to you know again as i said because it's working so well i just didn't want to kind of overpower it because um that can happen once you get like a director in a room you, you know we start asking questions and start being a bit more challenging mm. um but but no it's it, it works well for them, but they also use it as a forum to share problems. Mm. So they, they very often are talking about operational things that might not really be about teaching or learning or about hybrid and might not even have an impact on a course. But, you know, it's very often those managers, they're very um, isolated in their own nurseries. And I think when they come together, you know, and a lot of them know each other. Some of them have trained with each other here and elsewhere. Um, so they, they, it's a completely different feel to that. Mm. It's a bit like an action learning group. Yeah. Kind of thing. But again, if you said that and you put that title on it, yeah. it is scary a little bit because as mm. far as they're concerned, they've got a forum of early years managers, nursery managers, and they come together yeah. three or four times a year with the teacher who was um, a nursery manager and they share and again, we managed to slip in all of the things that we want them to do, which is having a look at curriculum and feeding back and providing work experience. So we, we get what we need out of it, and those employers get what they need as well. Mm -hmm. Have we had enough time for questions now? Are there any, is there anybody else who would like any questions? I think we've got a couple I think of minutes we'll... left. No, pardon, I think we've got, I think, Everybody's asked the questions that they that they wanted to ask. So thank you very much, um, Dee, for that. That was absolutely superb. Look at look at how you're engaging employers and how it's affecting and supporting your curriculum. Um, so just finally, there are some resources that we can um, signpost you to. We've got um, the, the the website for the resources from today up the top there. 
Um, the OC have a study program central website which contains a lot of information around, around um, study programs, employability, development and preparation, work experience. Um, there's the trainee staff support program with um, provider developed materials um, as the work experience readiness, readiness checklist and then some reports that you might be interested in to have a look at again just sharing with you different approaches to um, to um, looking at real realistic work experience and of course engaging employers in that so thank you for your time today thank you to everyone and um, and um, I hope you found it useful and we will be sending out the link to the work experience website so that you can um, you can get access to the downloaded resources. So thank you for your time and have a good week, rest of the week everyone. Thank you. Massive, massive thank you to Dee. Absolutely brilliant presentation. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, no thank problem. You.